The Tangent Egg Podcast is aimed at a mature audience. It contains themes that are not appropriate for all listeners. It's important to note that we are not experts. We routinely have no idea what we're talking about and are just three idiots sitting around a table. Listener discretion is advised. Welcome to Tangent Egg Podcast. I'm Seth, and as always with me is Swoosh and Jondo. Hi. Hello. Uh, and this week, I mean, we've got to start with it. It's the FTC failed to stop Microsoft. They, they failed, and fail. they still want to go back for more. Like, they completely they shut want the round two. Yeah. <laughs> they failed on every single count. They had to reach at least seven hurdles. They didn't even pass the first fucking step of the race. Yeah. Like, they tripped and just face-planted quickly. Yeah. But, like, so it's all actually settled now, right? Well, uh... Sort of. No. Well, that case in particular is settled. Like, there's still a few arguments that um, uh, online law- lawyers that have nothing to do with the case they're bringing up, like the, the judge's son worked for Microsoft, which the Ooh. FTC knew about. She brought that up on day one, saying, hey, do you really want me to do this case? My son works for Microsoft. He has nothing to do with gaming, but he works there. FTC mm. said, we want you. Like, FTC specifically asked for this judge the Microsoft didn't want this judge. They wanted yeah. to find someone else who was a little more pro corporate. Whereas mm. the FTC, no, we want this judge. Like they knew from day dot, she had a son who worked for Microsoft. She disclosed all uh, of okay. that. She went through a whole heap of shit. She jumped through every hurdle, and they said, "Nope, we want you." Yeah. So essentially, they wanted someone they thought would be lenient to them, and they still fucking lost. Well, they just didn't have the facts. They had yeah. nothing like, to back uh, them up. The quote here is, For the reasons explained, the court finds the FTC has not shown a likelihood it will pre- uh, prevail on its claim this particular vertical merger in this specific industry may substantially lessen competition. To the contrary, the recorded evidence points to more consumer access to Call of Duty and other Activision content. The motion is permanently in uh, the motion for permanent injunction is therefore denied nice so i like when, that when she gave her findings it's not just the a one paragraph it's a 56 mm. page document that she released oh, yeah. to yeah. the ftc and the microsoft we had to go through and redact whatever they didn't like um and then it'll go back through and it'll be a little more conservative redacted so what is currently redacted may be opened up and be more, a little more specific mm. um so there's whole sections in there that are currently redacted from the FTC that cover uh, Sony's third party dealings and a whole heap of other shit which is likely to get opened up because the head of the FTC has to face the US Congress tomorrow for us Um, yeah that's going to answer a whole heap of questions and she's refusing to provide details and paperwork to them so back to her because that's going to end up fucking well ain't it yeah I mean, the, the FTC is still trying to, like, re-up this case again. Oh, yeah. Like, okay, mm. we, we didn't get our injunction, but we're not done! No, yeah, they're going to appeal. They have, they have appealed the case, and look, they appealed it at pretty much the last minute on as on the first day they could. So, mm. if they had a case ready, you'd think they would have done it a little earlier in the day, but it was fucking last minute, yeah. throw it in, they get the paperwork done. And it honestly sounds like a if we can just stall this a little bit longer. It, it feels very much like a uh, the higher ups have sent a post it note down, down saying just litigate it until the deal's dead. Doesn't matter yeah. whether you win or not, just keep it in the court until it's dead. Yeah, I mean, Microsoft still has a couple of hurdles to get past. Like the um, British version is the, still the CMA um, still actually, blocking, actually, and there's one other one. Uh, hang on, I'll, I'll get it in one second. Uh, So, the FTC case, when Mm. they appeal it, they have to get uh, a secondary judge to agree to every single one of their points. Oh, that's good. Because it has to appeal the entire case, not just a single point. If they litigated each point individually, then they could get it on an individual point basis. But if Microsoft has a judge that agrees with a single point, the appeal is thrown out. Nice. I like that. Yep. Like, so they're fucked. Dead in the water. That appeal's fucked. Because their very first point, like, they can't prove where they get any of their facts, any of their details, everything about the case, the 
the uh, um, financial bloke who went through to state like he reckoned that 20% of current PlayStation gamers would migrate to Xbox um, once it transferred once they bought Activision and so during questioning the, the judge straight out asked him where did you get the 20% number like can you give me those details and he just danced around it and after a, a couple of days of questioning it turns out 20% is the only number that sort of worked for his equations oh That's so he basically had from. to yeah it's like, oh I made up numbers until it fit yeah pretty much he bounced around it until it was viable for Sony that no this is why it shouldn't go together 20% of people will move no it looks That's more and fucked. more like less than 2% would change over yeah. um, and they've also found that uh, they've got close to 2 million PlayStation players who they only play Call of Duty they don't play any other game and they that's may just change depressing. over depressing like some of them may change over because that's all they fucking play yeah which still isn't a large enough player base to affect this whole fucking deal mm. so Honestly, at this point with the FTC it's going through yeah. nice the big thing for me out of that is the fact that there's that many people just playing one game to yeah. me that just sounds sad like I, I remember when we were studying and you talk to people that I'm a gamer oh yeah what do you play what do you play Call of yeah. Duty it's like but you, cool what else do you play any, anything else like Call of Duty's fun but there's so much other good stuff out there no yeah. I only play Call of Duty like, oh. it's like cool you're playing one very specific <laughs> you're shooter you're not a gamer like, you're a game <laughs> you're, a, you're not a gamer you're a codder you, you're yeah. funneling money to Sony that's what you're doing <laughs> but yeah so outside of the FTC um, the CMA uh, now that the FTC has failed in their primary case the, F- the CMA has come up to Microsoft and said oh, let, let's talk about a deal let's um, like we're, we're currently blocking but uh, we want to figure something else out because their case is looking more and more flimsy because they're arguing much the same cases as the FTC yeah. um, from the get go it was believed that the FTC and CMA were talking pretty much in bed together sharing details and both were saying never no we're not talking at all mm. except for the 76 emails in three months about this case <laughs> that were, no, that, that's not talking that's chatting it's different yeah. yeah so they were very much having pillow talk about the whole fucking thing which is sort of blown up on them and now they're they're saying right we we can't strike a new deal with you but we can renegotiate this one and then after that they've stated that but it may involve a new investigation like Microsoft Mm. can close over the top of them they can close this deal without the CMA they just won't have Call of Duty on the cloud Um, it looks more and more likely that the details they do have is pretty much just to make uh, Call of Duty available to more cloud options or not have Call of Duty on the cloud in their region. Yeah, I can see them taking the hit for that. Yeah, like so they've pretty much sorted a deal with the CMA. So that's well, they're they're in current negotiation talks. So they're not going back to court. They're doing backroom talking. So that's more and more likely to close than it is to go to court. Um, The only other people that had a, a problem was the New Zealand fair trade. Yeah. Um, and they had several questions which were straight out answered. They had That's questions good. about it, but they haven't blocked anything. They just said, ah, uh, we'd like it we'd like validation on, on these couple of points and mm. it was provided. That's that's it. There's no one else stopping. FTC's just trying to wave a flag saying, We're doing things, we're gonna stop stuff and <laughs> so, Look, we're was, helping we're doing the stuff like you're not helping the consumers which is what you're meant to be no, doing that um the in their resp- the FTC's response to the case going against them mm. uh they don't mention Sony once in all of that despite, oh they finally learnt oh they nice. finally learnt oh no we're here for the consumers but well, the damage is already done considering like, the ruling from the judge sounds like it's like you're not that this is not in the best interest of consumers why are you doing this well, um, 
in the... It, it should literally just be a matter of, like, someone at the FTC now has to be looked into. Like, in, there has to be something. In the, the 56 pages, there's a quote from the judge that says, this deal will be very bad for Sony, but extremely good for gamers. Yeah. So, but, like, at that point, you have to ask the question, is why the fuck is the FTC even bothering yeah. with this? This is so, good for or, gamers and consumers. So, because Microsoft already had a deal with Nintendo, NVIDIA, and so many other places... It blows most of Sony's like most of the arguments out of the water. It's yeah, shot it in the head pretty much. Mm. So well, at least it's finally somewhat done, or at least yeah. on the path to being this, finalized. This wasn't the the last step over the line, but it was the final hurdle. Now you've mm. got a a couple of splinters and maybe a puddle, but yeah, it's at the home stretch. It's done. I mean, watch the FTC dive into that puddle though; they'll find a way. Oh yeah, <laughs> the puddle is just the appeal. Like, that's what it's like. Ah! Though, like the salt coming from fucking Sony fanboys, holy shit! Oh come on, they they've always been full of salt. Like no, like yeah. within an hour of the verdict coming through, the judge was receiving death threats from the ga- from Sony fucking fanboys. What? I yeah. hate the fact that doesn't surprise me. Straight out, like one of them I seen was, uh, um, so. This Judge Crowley wants to kill Sony just like I'm going to find her family. It's like, holy fucking Jesus, hell. Like, someone, FBI is going to knock on your door within the hour. Like, you are fucked. Saying like, that to a, like, about a judge is yeah, pretty fucking like, dumb. And, but to say it over a fucking video game console. Over a video game on, on fucking Twitter. It's a tweet that yeah. you put out. Like, yeah. for one, they've already fucking got all your information. So they know who you are. Like... Even if I don't know, Muskie will probably delete it just for shits and giggles. Uh, it's fucking been put up everywhere. So ah, uh, the side is loose. I love them. Name everything about him is on there. He used his actual name as a username. Jesus fucking Christ! It's all so, he's those people. It is. Yeah. <laughs> like, Did he also have a fish? Uh, was he holding like a dead fish in his profile picture? I don't know his dating profile. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, Someone will find it. Like. Holy fuck, like, all over the place, and the grubs are coming out of the fucking woodwork, and yeah, uh, you can see the people that actually give a fuck about what's going to happen in the industry to ones that are just a bit of salt, a bit of lemon juice in the wound. Well, basically, I, it gets to that point with certain fanboys where it's like, oh, it doesn't matter, I'm just going to be angry for the sake of being angry, and this is a reason for it. But, but... It boils down to PlayStation is not a personality. It's a brand. It doesn't no. care about yeah. you. No. It, not even oh, no, no. It, it cares in the fact that it cares about your money. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It, that's you're an just, impediment to that. Though. Yeah, that's the extent of their care. <clears throat> yeah, you're just their vector to your money. That's it. But, yeah, so the whole thing, it'll wrap up sooner, like within the, the next week or whatever the fuck it is, mm. this deal's done. Yeah, because how long yeah. have we been talking about this one? It's been oh, it's been going on for a couple of years now. now. Of oh, years yeah. now, it's been going on for. Oh, that's true. Yeah, but in the deal, it also specifically says that Sony has a deal for, with Activision for Call of Duty that it mm. won't appear on Game Pass for. I think it's until uh, the first one that can appear on Game Pass is twenty twenty five. But it also specifically only covers. Call of Duty, like um, new yeah. Call of Duties. So once his deal goes through, everything up to mod, like the original Modern Warfare Three, can be available on Game Pass. Ooh, nice! I'm into that. Yeah, as well as everything done by Blizzard, because it only specifically states Call of Duty. So any other game they want to do can be released on Game Pass immediately. There's nice. already been. Uh, uh, a leaked thing from uh, Xbox Brazil who put up on their splash screen of Diablo 4 on Game Pass with a date. Good old uh, fucking Brazil. Love Brazil. Yeah, like, <laughs> it came up on the official Xbox website for an hour and it was like screenshot and sprayed everywhere. It's like, As well, it that's going to happen. Yeah. Like, holy Jesus. And Actually, speaking of Diablo, like, how's that going, guys? I have feelings. Are, are they good feelings? Not particularly. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. We're going to get in, like, 
you need to understand, like, we went to a game design university. So, I understand, like, I'm not a game designer, but I did learn a bunch about how to build and make games function. Which is why I find it so infuriating that Diablo 4 seems determined to take away any reason that you'd want to grind for the stuff. I so, did the design course at uni, and yeah. I'm still questioning a lot of the shit they're doing in this. So the two big ones that I've been running into is that legendary weapons are meaningless, and level scaling is stupid. Yeah. So the legendary weapons in this game come with some cool stats, and they can have some cool abilities on them, I'm not going to say they can't. But the big thing is that they have the legendary affects. These can just show up on anything. Yeah. So yeah. I'm not actually grinding for, you know, Griswold's Rotten Tooth. I'm grinding for a Griswold's Rotten Tooth with a decent affect on it. Yeah. And oh, God, that's the horrible. only ones that have got a guaranteed affect are the six uh, unique items. Yeah. That's the, the, it, You're it, never going to get them super the unique. extreme, yeah. like, you've got a better chance at going down and buying rolls and rolls of Scratchy and getting a mm. jackpot on that than you are fucking getting dropping these bastards. Yeah, though, that alone they, is already. Though they did fuck up, um, and in a patch last week, they changed the drop rate so they dropped in extremely quickly. Like people were getting Ooh. full sets within a get within a day. Nice, nice. Um, well done. And within two hours of that patch coming out, they just completely deactivated the drop rates for all unique items. Oh, so within two hours of like, oh my god, you can actually get things. Like no. Um, and they nuked that from orbit. Oh, wow, the thing we might want to do in a Diablo see, game, that's, get that's cool what, loot? That's what sort of kicked the, the whole community up with, is that, mm. like, oh my god, like, within two hours of a patch coming out and the community actually having fun, they nuked it. But it's yeah. taking weeks and... I don't can't remember how the fuck long it came out. It's kind of taking several weeks for large bugs to actually get fixed. Any time oh, that, yeah. like... A, an easy way to grind or a quick way to level gets nuked immediately but any problems take several weeks hmm. Which, yeah you can like, always tell where they're fucking like priorities lay can't you oh yeah they gotta yeah. get the grind yeah but it but like when you make legendary items so unappealing to get yeah you don't incentivize the grind mm. no at that point I just don't care and I won't go for it like, and the other thing that's really annoying and like if you've ever played a role playing game like this is the most bizarre bit level scaling enemies to you mm. is kind of dumb because yeah. you don't never get to feel powerful no and you can't be challenged because the challenge is always tailored to you mm. so an enemy at the start of the game is as durable at level one as he is when you're at level one hundred because he's just been yeah. up bumped. You to may you. as well not have you a level. You never grow him. Yeah. You may as well not have a level. Yeah. Pretty much. You basically don't level up. The world does. Yeah. Mm. You stay the same and just have more abilities to use. You never get stronger. No. And it's that a- also means that when you fight a boss, you don't have some epic battle where you are under leveled and you got to really fucking scrap it up and fight the now the boss was scaled to you. Yeah. So it just feels like a normal level at fight. Every point. Yeah. That, and it kills the curve. That is not fun. Like No, it's annoying. It's thoroughly like, like, annoying. We do it's this shit big... for escapism. We want to like go off and feel terrifyingly powerful. Occasionally in a game, I will fuck off back to a starting area just to destroy everything that lives there. I mean, come on, how many times did you play the start of the Force Unleashed? I yeah. still have a save for that. Playing as Darth Vader to go and fuck up a Wookiee village was really cathartic and fun. Oh, yeah. But, yeah, like, that that's escapism. That's what we want. We don't want to sit there and grind and everything is the same. And th- That's just a uh, job. Uh, grind it's for several hours. Now I can do 5% more nothing. Yay! Yay! Yeah. It's a big part of why I started playing the type of barb I did. Mm. One that you basically don't have to do anything and shit just dies. Because it's like, well, it's not interesting to fight, so I might as well just die faster. Basically, yeah. to make it interesting, you had to go the cheese option. Yeah, yeah. that's why yeah, I go minion route. Necromancer yeah. minions. <laughs> My one just maxes thorns. So, you know, once I pop all my buffs, I'm like, hey, I'm basically unkillable, and anything that touches me just kills itself. <laughs> my, I fucked around with a necromancer build, and all I have to do is hold base attack, 
uh, raise five zombie, uh, five skeletons, and I get maximum damage for the build I've got. So I just sit there and I'm playing with an Xbox controller because it's so much easier on the PC than it is with the fucking keyboard and mouse. And it does everything for me. You're holding one button. Oh no, there's combat. Oh well. Yeah. yeah. It, it, it's ju- it's just not engaging. No. And like, if my dumbass, who many years ago did a few game design courses at uni, can see that that's not a good idea, what the fuck, Blizzard? Yeah, but like, a company who makes more money than most like small countries can't employ a game developer who actually knows how to make a game. But like, in all of this it is a lot easier to deactivate something you've already got in there than it is to make something yeah. new into it. But that is true. So much of this is could just be an adjustment. Like, yeah. yeah. They either take something that works and the community enjoys and nerf it into the ground just to balance everything else. Why not make everything else more powerful? Make it entertaining. Yeah, yeah. Have the opening I- region at fucking levels 1 to 20 and the next region fucking well, 20 I mean, to 40. That's how it always used to work. Like, have you noticed that when you look at your quest log, it has a suggested level for the quest? Yeah. It's always your level. Yeah. yeah. And though, uh, if you find a uh, a side quest at, at a particular level, that won't level up with you. That'll still say the level number will yeah. still say that, but every enemy in that level is still scaled to you. Yeah. Mm. So that number really means nothing. It means yeah. actually nothing. That's fucked. Yeah. So why do it? Why even yeah. have suggested level if it literally doesn't matter? I'm calling it now. The next Diablo, if we get one, will not have levels. I don't feel like they want them. I, I'm guessing they're like they're prepping to drop levels out. Well, I mean, like one of the things that perplexed the shit out of me because when they were doing all their prelim material, they were talking about how detailed their leveling up boards were going to be. Yeah. And that they were they were taking a lot of inspiration from Path of Exile and stuff yeah. like this, and they showed images. And it was really cool. I didn't follow much of it while the game was coming out. Mm. Um, like last week, I, I you know broke fifty and got into the Paragon levels and and started playing around with that. It's not even close to what they suggested it was going to be. No. And yeah, I know I haven't been keeping an eye on it, so woe is me. Mm. But. It, it's nothing like what they were suggesting. Like, your core level up board isn't really leveling up. It's You don't put stats in anything. You just get an ability point to deal with the fact that the world around you is stronger. Yeah. yeah. And you can't unlock everything. You have to unlock specific things because you don't have enough points to unlock everything. So you can't create any kind of, like, ultimate custom class. Unless you're willing to refund those skill points and try again and make a build that works better this time. Yeah. And then you have your Paragon boards, which are just basically the same shit. It's just a linear pathway towards certain nodes where you can slot in good shit. Yeah. So why are you going to use the rest of the fucking board? And doing that whole thing, like, you can get a total of, I think it's 58 skill points. If you go through and level up to level 50 and then get... uh, the All two points per well. region for like finding shit and actually doing stuff in a region I think you end up with a total of 58 skill points hmm. it's around there but if you want to make up a new build for your character you got to respec it and start again from scratch or yeah. if you want to do anything you can't why don't I just add a fucking loadout add a secondary screen yeah. where I can say these are the skills I want this is really cool oh, I want to change it up let me change to a different fucking loadout or just try something different. Like, yeah. leave my build as yeah. it is and then fuck around for a little bit. Like, give me some That'd fucking options. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's annoying as shit having to this... respec that entire thing. 58 skill points and I think I'm, um, what, four or five levels in a Paragon board? But it says yeah. you can have up to four fucking boards on that thing. Yeah. If I respec that motherfucker, I'd be there for a month just respecing that shit. Yeah. It, it, it's like, there, like I'm not gonna lie there are moments where I do have fun oh yeah but mm. they're getting fewer and further apart yeah like I'd like to be able to find a way to like for one the amount of shit loot you find like I'm level like 52 I think it is and I'm still mm. finding fucking white and blue loot just yeah. give me a way to fucking to break that down immediately as soon as I pick it up it breaks mm. down to resources 
Instead of having to pick yeah. it all up, yeah. go to town, have it broken down so I can get the materials yeah. I do want, and then go back out. That's just... No, just like an auto-grind. Let's go. Fucking oath. Just give me a way to... Or even give me a fucking minion I can send back to get rid of. That's one thing fucking yep. Torchlight did right. Ah, yes. Damn that right. fucking minion in Torchlight was brilliant. But... So that's that's one thing that's fucking annoying. But, like, particularly I'm running a... a Necromancer minion darkness build at the moment just bucking around with it and the amount of times like right I picked up a new bit of gear is it useful? no because it gives me bonuses to skills I'm not using I have no interest in yeah. why? Yep. let me fucking find a way to target what I fucking want give me I've had that issue with like on. the last two Diablos to be honest mm. like play as a monk you don't get any monk gear you get like warrior or mage yeah. gear it's like they I have, can't use they this they have changed it like I am finding like I'm not finding playing as a necromancer I'm not getting drops for a druid or any other class yeah. I'm only getting them for my specific class but I'm getting them for a build I'm not other using. builds like, yeah at least yeah. have it whatever ability you use most loot starts dropping for that at least yeah. give me a way to progress actually make myself more powerful not just okay here's another chest piece that uses bone spikes I'm not using bone spikes okay yeah. next one nope that one's using blood forge nope not using that either okay it's another useless bit of gear yep it's fucking annoying yeah all the um max roll affects I've got all effect skills I'm not using yeah mm. but I've got a whole heap I've found one piece that's useful and it was like I found it back when I was like level 30 and it was to give me two extra skeletons. Nice. That's that's the kind of gear I want. Give yeah. me something Honestly, that's fucking useful. The way Blizzard's been going these last few years, it would not surprise me if whatever class you choose or whichever build you start focusing on gets lower spawn rates or lower drop rates for items to try and force you to grind more. Again, it's not doing that in, in 4. It's yeah. giving you your gear. It's just... You have all these locked in skills, but because mm. I can't pick up a uh, a set of gear that gives like cool abilities to whirlwind. No. Oh well maybe I'll give whirlwind a go. No, if I want to do that I've got to refund my skill points, respend it all to spec into a whirlwind build, yeah. and hope I like it to make the gear I just found worth it. Because yeah. otherwise you gotta spend half an hour respecking back to how you just fucking were. Yeah, fuck I that. cannot believe I'm about to say this. D three did it better. Yeah. Yeah. Like, hate the leveling system in D3. See, I did because I it's, did one build in that and never bothered going back to build another one. Yeah. Well, the, the, the thing I hated about D3 was that, like, everything unlocked at the same level for everyone, so everyone's barb was basically the same. Yeah. And I thought that was dumb. Hmm. But, at least, if there was something I wanted to try, all I, could, all I could just select the abilities and change it around and be like, okay, I'm going to give this a go. Yeah. See if I like this. This system is stupid mm. it does not like they they talk about how the fact you refund at any time it's fine yeah but it doesn't feel good no nah, is there a cost to it as well through, or? Back through, yeah, yeah gold cost yeah cost you coin I, if it didn't cost me coin I wouldn't complain because I could just like pull the points out move them around I don't care yeah, yeah. But, but they're like no no you have to spend the money to refund them to build it again hope you like it otherwise you're spending that money again to refund to build your old character again yeah, yeah. That's it's why it dumb. needs like it's not good. Like two or three loadouts. Like give me one where I'm keeping my current active build, and then mm. give me at least one more to fuck around with. To yeah, re something to the play loadout. with. Yeah, and then sure I might have to go back to town to swap it out. Mm. Oh no, but give me the fucking option. Yeah, yeah. it's fucking shits you up the wall. Like, On the plus oh, side, it's not too much longer till Bolter's Gate comes out. That will replace it. Uh, look, man, we've got to get through two months, and that's it, and then everyone gets to forget this game exists and go play Starfield. Yes, true. But I'm, I'm looking forward to Baldur's Gate 3. Oh. Yeah, yes, especially after the whole shit about, like, the uh, <laughs> the, the bear sex scene. Somehow that uh, made me want to watch it more. Like, I, I, I want to play this game now. This is hilarious. So, if, in that, pretty much every character can shag every other character. If you happen to mm. sh want to shag a druid, you can tell them, hey, how about animal form? Like... Yeah, I am. I'm am wondering how if that's going to push the lines of fucking bestiality laws in some places. But oh yeah, definitely. All depends on your your former druid and your ideals of bestiality, I guess. 
What kind of yeah. fairy I mean, do you want to be? Is, how, how detailed is your costume? <laughs> it's just funny because like they were streaming and I think it was on Twitch this announcement. They started showing the scene. There's nothing. No yeah. one's naked. No. There's no dick. Nothing. And, and Twitch is like, nope. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's funny. It's a so- tasteful sex scene with a bear. Can't have that. <laughs> but it's oh. tasteful. Furries are going to be eaten well. Oh, absolutely. Uh, never oh. feed the furries, or they can't get rid of them. You get a wild shape, and you get a wild shape. Everybody gets a wild shape. <laughs> <laughs> so, before we get into the fun back half of the podcast, we want to cover the one thing that's kind of shite that I actually have, like, breaking news on. Ooh, absolutely. I like breaking news. Breaking news. So, it's a the thing we were going to talk about was the uh, writer strike in the states. Yes, yeah. um, and some shit we found out about it. Yeah, like as of today, SAG Astra has joined the strike. This is the first time Ooh. the Actors Guild and the Writers Guild have striked at the same time in sixty years. Oh, uh, to be honest, I'm not surprised given the yeah. way the streaming services reacted to the writers' strike as a giant fuck you to the industry. Yeah, I am not surprised Actors Guild are gone. They'll come for us next. We have to st- extend that it. That adds a lot of weight to that fucking strike. Yeah, it does. Yeah. Like, oh no, we don't have current writers. Let's go to the nearest university. Who wants to be a writer? Yeah. Like, At which point now, it's like, oh, we don't have any current actors. Oh. Like, oh, like, oh no, we don't have any writers. More reality TV. Yeah. Yeah. But, but like, the way this was all... Because, like... What was the actual wording for what they said? Hang the, on, I'm pulling it up. Because the gist of it's fucked. Um, the so gist being, the, we can wait them out. The They'll lose their homes before we surrender. Hang on, I've got it right here. Uh, receiving positive feedback from Wall Street since the WGA went on strike May 2nd, Warner Brothers, Disco- Warner Brothers Discovery, Apple, Netflix, Amazon, Disney, Paramount, and others have become determined to break the WGA. As one studio exec blatantly put it, uh, to do so, the studios and AMPTP believe that by October, most writers will be running out of money after five months on the picket lines and no work. The end mm. game is to allow things to drag on until union members start losing their apartments and losing their homes. A studio executive told, Dead- told Deadline, acknowledging the, the cold as ice approach, several other sources reiterated the statement. One insider called it cruel but necessary evil. The studios I would not call this necessary. No. No. Uh, the studios and streamers next th- next think financially strapped writers would go to WGA leadership and demand they restart talks before they could be a, uh, before what could be a very cold Christmas. In that context, the studios and streamers feel they would have a position to dictate the terms of any agreement possible. And now the Actors Guild has weighed in, and that's gone out the fucking window. Had they just listened and given writers something they could actually use, they would not be facing this. They would not have fucked themselves up for the first time in 60 years. Given the fact that 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 the whole thing wasn't even for, like, math... Like, I think it was for, like, a 2% increase in pay, and... They wanted. Uh, I think they wanted it was to recognition being, like, for something. Uh, I can't yeah, remember yeah, they, what it was. they didn't want to be um, work for hire jobs. Yeah. yeah, because one of the big problems they were having was like new writers instead of coming onto a project and working with senior guys and then learning for them so they can then become showrunners in their own right. They work for hire, so they show up, they write a thing, and then they fuck off. So they never learn. Yeah. Mm. Um. But, and there might have been some other things, but I remember the big one was like, we just want 2% more pay. Yeah. Like, you can yeah. have all these industries, you can have streaming services, but if you try and film a show and you don't have a writer, okay, someone might be able to figure it out. But if you don't have an actor to be in front of the camera, that's that's no show. That's, that's no yeah. movie, no show. The only way yeah. they could ever possibly recover from this bullshittery is to somehow start pulling AI actors out of their ass that are hyper realistic and actually don't look like shit. Like that ain't happening. Before so, we know that'll start being in contracts. We own your oh no, likeness or anything like that. Well, there's already there was a most recent Black Mirror series had a episode about that. The um, was it Gene is is horrible or something? But 
But, that was an amazing episode, by the way. It was, absolutely. Well, there was but, like a rumor last year that went around that Bruce Willis sold his likeness to some AI mob that was meant to be able to put him into movies, and he since came out and said, no, that's, no, mm. <laughs> not happening. Yeah. But, like, they already do tours of dead artists. Like, Tupac went on tour the other, yeah. like, a couple of years back. Like, and it's just a, a hologram. Honestly, like, you know how you have, like, a uh, an organ donor card and that kind of stuff when you die? You need another one that says you are never to use my likeness after my death. Yeah. Like, check yeah. that box. Like, you can't posthumously, like, anyone in my family can't sell my likeness off to then parade and dance around. Like, no. Fuck you. <laughs> you get me for when I'm alive and that's it. Unless I can be a ghost in the shell, fuck you. <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. It is... Is dumb. I, I hate this kind of bullshit from any kind of company, but the fact that they were so blatant about it and thought mm. they would everything be fine. Yeah. They have literally said, We can break these people. We can ruin their mm. lives to the point where they will just be willing slaves to what we right. want them to do. What are they gonna do? Work for us or live on the street? <laughs> yeah. Like get fucked, cunt. Like I yeah. I don't know why the the like higher ups and CEOs of these mm-hmm. things, like the mega rich people, think that people won't eventually just go. You know what? There's enough of us that your security can't get through us all. They will take you. Like well, it's getting to that's that. That's the whole but, like point of the movie Ants. Like there are yeah. more of us. Like you need us more than we need you. Was it Ants or a Bug's Life? A Bug's Life. That's it. Aha. I forgot Ants was a thing. I rediscovered yeah. that movie the other day. It was it was great. Yes, oh. but eat the Let's rich. Face it, Yay. It's, <laughs> it, it's all fuck around and find out, and they're getting a lot of find out right now. Yeah. Absolutely. We are the find side, out generation. Side note, I, just because I'm, I'm weird and I look up random shit, I looked up the origins of fuck around and find out, and I'm honestly surprised it's not Australian. Wait, really? Yeah. Where'd it come from? Um, I couldn't find a definitive source on it. Um, but nowhere said it as, as Australian first, but like, hmm. I swear to God, well, I've heard it plenty of other places say it, um, cause I've watched a lot of shorts and shit on YouTube. Yeah. Um, it feels like such an Australian phrase. It does. Um, it's that short, succinct, uh, succinct, fuck you. It's just like, yeah, no. You fucked around, now you're gonna find out. Yeah. I actually, I'm gonna place a bet. I reckon it's the Canadians who said it first. I'll, I'll have a bit more of a deep dive on it because it was mm. sort of like just an idle like I hear it all the time from uh, Australians I feel more, love more that like phrase. it's uh, almost biblical like thine yeah. fucked around with thine <laughs> hands find <laughs> out <laughs> uh, actually there, it reminds me of the way I found out where the rule of thumb came from oh yeah like, there's plenty that's of fucking sayings like thing. that that are fun yeah like the rule of thumb but then the whole like checking the nuclear fallout I'm like that's terrifying, and no, I love the fact. Yeah. That's why the Fallout guy does that. Yeah. The, the actual rule of thumb is, like, it's a really fucking shitty thing, in that yeah. you weren't allowed to beat your partner with anything thicker than your thumb. Oh, that's right. That was the other one that popped up for it, yeah. yeah. If you can, ah, uh, the old days. Is, uh, if you can hold your thumb out and cover a nuclear cloud with your thumb, you're in the safe zone. Yeah. If you can't, you will not be perfectly good cooked. fucking luck. You don't have long to yeah. live. yeah. Because there's like, you know, there's the safe zone and then there's like, you know, inner points where you just vaporize and there's that weird medium place called the flavor zone where just everything's perfectly cooked. Yeah. That, uh, the that's distance welcome where to every, my, every yeah. frozen pizza is cooked perfectly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and the same as uh, the... Uh, you know what? That actually sp- explains an awful lot of Guy Fieri's general appearance. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Flavor Town's actually in the middle of a nuke blast zone. <laughs> it's that, uh. Yeah. Sorry. That would explain a lot about Guy Fieri. Uh, that <laughs> explain a lot about him in general. Just microwave his is, head. Uh, fuck streaming services. Yes. Pay your writers. Fucking no. Right, if you If you pay writers, you get good writing. If you keep using, it, like, shit heel writers who haven't even finished a course yet, you're gonna get shit stuff. But that boils down to every level. Pay mm. your artists. Yeah. Mm. Right, just in general. Pay people. pay people. Pay yeah. people. Yeah, pay people yeah. for the services provide they fucking service. provide. Yeah. Pay. Oh, I hate yeah. that. So, 
Shall we get on to the, the, the fun back half of this week's podcast? Because I vote yes, because we're already angry. We should probably move on. <laughs> so, this month's book was uh, good old Swoosh's selection with yeah. The Atrocity Archives, book one of The Laundry Files. I really enjoyed this book. It yeah, it was fun. I've it was read it so before. Dumb. Going back and reading it again was just like, mm, this is just like a nice, comfy book. The weird thing is, it reminded me in certain points of the um, the Discworld series. Anytime the, the new wizards, uh, like Ponder Stibbons, anytime he's involved. Because yeah. it's the whole thing, it was like, ah, yes, you know, you to make a hand of glory, you need a hand from a freshly killed person. And they go through all the stuff for it. Which was like, you can do the same thing with a chicken claw and a biro, man. Uh, it doesn't need to be anything more difficult than that. Yeah. And, and I love that. It's fucking great. It, like, so much about it is like, it feels very grounded in this, like, yeah. it's like, here's reality, but here's the second layer to it. And if you pierce if you, that, there's no going back through that membrane. If you fuck with mathematics enough, demons appear. Like, I like that. It's fucking yeah, I, dumb. I love, like, speaking of how grounded it is, one of the early things that happens that I think is great is the, the main characters that are a seminar on how to summon demons. Yeah. Which mm. is just, like, a hilarious concept in of itself. I know. Mm. Um, Something goes wrong during it, and they're debriefing him. And the guy's like, so what happened? So this happened, and the guy gets possessed. Mm-hmm. And is that when you grab the fire extinguisher? Yeah. yeah. And then they beat him to death with it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the, they've got oh. a straight out procedural man, uh, manual of like, this is what happens when someone is possessed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it happens I just like, often. I like the fact that once you're in the laundry, you can never escape the laundry. No. And yeah. it happens to a character, like, towards the, I think it's the second half of the book. Uh, the police officer um, who he gets paired with at one point and it's like alright cool and she's asking questions to like the main character's direct supervisor he's like yeah I'm done and just recites the speech Yeah. Uh, at which point it's like you're, you're no, welcome to the laundry get on the fucking chopper and she's like wait what it's like I tried to fucking warn you man like you're a part <laughs> of this now I was like but I have a job like no you don't you work for the laundry and no one else now well fucking done it's like but I have a family he's like that don't mean shit or the um like the female lead in the story uh yeah where she gets abducted and she's about to be uh sacrificed to a demon and then she mm. pops up later as a librarian just cause yeah I work here now I'm yeah like, it was like, I'm an archaeologist this, this... but now I just work in a library cause <laughs> things happened <laughs> they needed shit someone. went wrong I- the main character mentions that he was poking around in the server and accidentally um, caused an incident, and that's what caused him to be part of the laundry files. He just works in their IT division. Um, um, I know it's not from this book, and like it's the setup for another book, mm. but like one of the later books, um, a bunch of people contract vampirism from demons from another dimension because some dude made a spreadsheet. <laughs> <laughs> that's well, amazing. They, they mentioned that... Um, I to be careful with that fractal screensaver because you don't know what yes. actually come through it like that is oh, gold like I how love deep that. the fractals go and what's at the, the other f- end of it the fact they have an entire division based around making sure the artists for like card games don't accidentally create demon yeah. circles <laughs> like <laughs> that it, shit it's, it's so wonderful like I love everything about it. like quite honestly there's some great stuff in this mm. this book series um I, mean, I would the, highly recommend anyone read it. The whole thing, like every book, is a banger. There's one yeah. of them that's basically, you know, Tolkien, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm. That's little. That's kind of more history than fiction. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, like I like the characters in this book as well. This first book had some pearls. Oh, Bob is the best. Oh, he is. But the guy, um, who's the guy who's like running the joint uh, in the basement with the. Um, fish tape desk. Oh, uh, Angleton? Yes, Angleton. Um, the fact that, like, all the shit happens as an attempted, like, internal coup. Someone basically just tries to fuck with him. He's like, none of that. And <laughs> the, the entire way through, they keep building this guy up as he is terrifying. He's an ex, like, field agent. He now just runs things in the background. You don't fuck with him. By the way, you are now assigned to him as, a ha- as your handler. Um, but it's like, at one point, he walks back in after this shit's gone down and he's playing with one of those like little mimetic ball things the click clack balls but they're like rubberized he's like that's fucking weird they're just they're the severed heads or like severed shrunken heads the people who's tried to fuck with him yeah 
It's like, but, what the fuck? <laughs> like, I think that's probably one of the things I think really works the most, particularly about, like, again, this is slightly from, like, other books, hmm. but, like, they have a lot of really crazy, fucked up shit. Yeah. That just sort of blindsides you out of nowhere, which feels so weird. Yeah. Because they ground <laughs> the book series so well. The characters feel like they kind of know what's going on and what they're doing, mm. and then something will just, like, out of left field. Where the fuck did that come from? And it's almost always something horrific. Yeah. Oh, yeah, like the, the one you mentioned before where he beats the guy, uh, he's had him with a fire extinguisher. Um, before that, leading up to it, he keeps mentioning a horrible person he has to deal with every day because he doesn't know how to use computers. Um, and that and guy turns up in the that. seminar. <laughs> yeah, mm. absolutely. And that's the thing, like, I fucking... I felt that in my bones, yeah. essentially. Like, I, I have done that as a job, and I know the person he's talking about. And then he turned up to the demon summoning thing and had gone to the wrong seminar. And the main character's like, man, you're in the wrong place. Maybe go and talk to someone else. Like, talk to the guy leading no, no. it. He'll be in the right no, place. No. It's better than that. It's not that he went to the wrong one. It's that his department needed to use up their budget. So That's just true. Him. <laughs> yeah. Which is even more like shit I've seen in the real world. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> well, and he's only sent to it because his direct supervisor is trying to punish him. Just trying yeah. to send him off to do some fucking bullshit and we've all had those fucking supervisors but oh yeah and then, it, and then it all ends with him getting his head caved in by a fire extinguisher it's yeah. like where did this come from because like they sent just... him to this thing because he's technically part of the laundry somewhere in an offshoot yeah. or something and instead of briefing him on hey you're going into the demon part of this he's like he doesn't believe anything it's like oh yeah sure demons that's pretty cool and just touches the thing the guy mm. keeps telling him not to fucking touch <laughs> But it's like yeah. oh, this this whole book just screamed like the the game control. Yeah, yeah, so, absolutely. Uh, control with the feeling of uh, uh, a little Alan Wake. Um, what's mm. that? Quantum yeah. Break, I think it is. Or Quant- you do know you just quoted three games by the same company, right? There's a fucking reason <laughs> for that. Like, they're yeah. great fucking games, but if you enjoyed those games. Listen to this book. It's a book version of those fucking games. Like, and there's a fuck. whole series of them. Yeah. Honestly, it gave me Monster Hunter, Hunter International vibes as well. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it was the style of writing and the characters. Yeah. And the, like, kind of. the, the, the feel of prep that the character has. Yeah. Like, mm. okay, we're going to do this. I'm going to need this. Where's my fucking little computer? What's it like? Yeah. What do yeah. I need to do? Like, I like the fact that he's not geared for like actual firearms, but they'll trust him with, like a Medusa gun that just fucking... Yeah. <laughs> burns out all the carbon and the great thing is they explain all the science behind it as well like he goes through oh yeah with this gun we don't know exactly how it works but if anything in the field of view of this thing if it's organic it's being turned into a charred mess it's like I love that it's terrifying yeah we don't know we can't explain it to you but it works yeah Mm. but it's that it's that it's that like kind of attempt to explain it and in a way that you can understand that helps it all feel grounded yeah. instead of just spooky space magic. Yeah. It pulls yeah. it just close enough together that you can bridge the gap yourself saying, I can sort of get how that might work. Okay, yeah. I yeah. don't understand it, but it works. Okay, continue on. Like, like We can make invisibility, invisibility cloaks from dead people's hands. Yay. Yeah, like, pretty much. Like It's interesting. I love all of it. And they go through a lot of the, the tech behind it. Mm. But it's and they fun. don't stop. If you keep yeah. reading the books, they just keep building on it, and it keeps going into more and more interesting places and doing mm. crazier and crazier shit. Yeah. Um, like I said, would highly recommend. If you read this first book and it at all piques your interest, <clears throat> just go for it. Just devour mm. the set. It's it's well worth it. It was also more of a conglomerate of little side stories and that kind of stuff, this first one, mm. because he's, he's still getting... He's only just become a field agent. Mm. Um, or he's in his trial period for being a field agent. And watching him blunder through them is really fun. Like, even after yeah. they have an incursion event, they have to go into a uh, extra-dimensional space and do some shit and all that kind of fun stuff. Uh, that alone is Nazis. fun. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's right, because the, the Nazis lock themselves away, or as an mm. alternate Earth or something. Um, Nazi super science, dumb. Um, but when he goes back from that, they just give him a, a folio and say, count the cows and leave him go. Like, that's it. That's the only, like, thing he has to work from. Mm. Uh, and he goes through and does what he can. He goes back, and they detail what he did wrong. 
And it's a, it doesn't feel like he's being dressed down so much as like, what you did there, that was good work. However, think about this. At which point the character themselves has that realization of like, I almost fucking died. Because um, it's like, yeah, weird and fun. Like, the Medusa um, camera thing was interesting, especially since it's all based in the UK, who just have cameras everywhere. Mm. And the concept of this um, weapon, like the gun he has that just carbonizes a person, they can put it through a camera. Any camera. Mm. And just to, like, imagine putting that across, like, all of London or something. It's a mm. terrifying thought. So the stakes in this book series seem real. They they seem high and interesting. Yeah. Well, the, yet having most enough of the time, society like, that doesn't know anything about it to have something that can yeah. affect everyone, it's just, yeah... I've really enjoyed the scope of this. The weird bit is, um, unlike a lot of books where there's like an apocalyptic level piece of technology or thing that a company or group has, things like the the Medusa through the camera, it still feels tangible enough that they can, like, like legitimately, like, one guy can stop it. Yeah. Yeah. It, like it, like, most of the time, they never feel like it's too godly powerful. No, like, one person in the right place. they're not jumping a shark or throwing a... Uh, it's not a Godzilla level event coming in, yeah. but it's something that could have just as much impact without but as big of an impact. Yeah, that's actually one of the things that's really interesting if you read the whole series, because they talk about the fact that they're heading toward one of those. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah, and it's a big deal across the whole franchise. Is the pe- potential effect of a uh, oh god, I can't remember what they call it. Um, the cascade effect thing, or the yeah, the big cataclysm one. Yeah. Um, I can't remember what it's called off the top of my head, but they have a, ca- a couple of categories, and like one of them is the waking of the sleeper in the pyramid. Yeah. Um, and there's a few of them. Like that's the thing. There's a few of these out there. There's not one. Yeah. There's a few of these. Like if this happens, we're boned. Yeah. And there's... it's just going to happen. Yeah. One day it'll happen, and we're fucked. We can't stop it. So neat. Again, uh, one of the things from a later book, they uh, like computers themselves. Hmm. The crunching of numbers is actually waking an elder god. Oh, nice! <laughs> like a slow tick down to waking up an elder god. Yeah, because well, it's mm. it's all to do with like um, calculation um, of like a, a big equation thing, and oh, as we just yeah, passively yeah. generate, like humans just passively crunch it just yeah. by existing, because mm. our brains are basically computers. Yeah, and so as our population got bigger, the effect of that went up. Yeah. Now that we have computers that can do those calculations for us and do it better, it's exponentially making this happen. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Like There's some movie. crazy shit in this franchise. Absolutely read it. Please yeah. read The Laundry Files. I, I'm definitely really, getting really more good. of this, to be honest. Like, I'm yeah. picking up more of them as I get more uh, things through Audible and everything else. Mm, but, yeah. This type of book is very much the reason I was very glad we started doing this Book of the Month thing, because. Yeah. Other than doing this, I probably never would have even looked at this book, and I'm so fucking yeah. glad I did. I <laughs> highly recommend it. Definitely. Uh, but I think it was it's Seth's turn for a book. Yes, this, this month it's my pick this week, uh, this uh, month, and I am actually returning to a franchise that I have read before that I have tried to bitch slap every person I can who likes science fiction to read. I have bought this whole. I have bought the entire book series more than once, mm. um, because I bought it all, and then I bought it all again for my mom, and then my mom lost some of the books, so I had to buy it again for my mom, <laughs> uh. and then I bought it a again in large print, like big, solid uh, tome versions of the books, because I really liked how they looked on a bookshelf. Yeah, um, this is actually a series that I only read. Because I was in a bookshop, and my mom said I could buy one book. And I found a two-pack. Ah, same price. Nice. So I was like, aha, I have beat the system. I get two books, not one. <laughs> and that was the only reason I ever picked up this book series. I didn't even like flip it over. I was like, yeah, that sounds really cool. I'm going to read that. I literally just thought I was gaming the system and was like, yeah. Nice. I like it's that. It's called The Saga of Seven Sons is the series, and the first book is called Hidden Empire. It's by Kevin J. Anderson. Mm -hmm. Um, And it is absolutely one of my favorite series. This is an honest-to-God space opera. Like, every chapter of the book, different character. 
And there's a lot of them. <laughs> there's a lot of characters in this book. And across the franchise... Like, this is actually a completed series, by the way. There's only seven books in the main series. There is a follow-up series of three books if you really want to read it. I wouldn't recommend it. But the core seven are very good. And across that whole... Se- the, ca- the cast just grows. Yeah. It doesn't get smaller. It just gets bigger. <laughs> it is an honest-to-God space opera. So, this is the uh, publisher's summary. An explosive new science fiction series by New York Times best-selling author Kevin J. Anderson. Hidden Empire is the first volume in the saga of Seven Sons, modeled after the Star Wars and X-Files universes. Anderson has become a, the foremost science fiction writer of the century, bringing life to vivid characters and worlds of light fans across the galaxy. Yay. The Clickers are now extinct alien civilization left behind vast technology technological information that has been discovered by two xenoarchaeologists. One discovery, a device that converts gas planets into life-giving suns, is quickly put to the test with unimaginable results. Arising out of the test, a new alien species that threatens every human, every human, mankind is left with the dim reality. Either fight the new alien life form or face humiliation, death, and extinction. Uh, yeah. Yeah, no, I, I've seen, I actually have read the first book for this, and some of the characters in this are great. I love the society they build in this like world. Mm. Like, the Romans alone are worth the series because they're fucking yeah. hilariously fun. Um, like, space gypsies. I like, love it. <laughs> they Basically, speak, they're on a generational a ship. I'm glad to be mm. getting into it. They, they were on a gen- the Romans were on a generational ship that was fle- that was going out from Earth. They found no planet, and they were like, "Fuck it, we're parking in this asteroid belt. We're just hanging out here." Well, it was like basically they they kept getting pummeled. Like, it was like the worst journey from what I could tell because they got hit by shit. And it was like we have to make repairs. We're just going to stop at this asteroid belt, and then the ship kept going but left a bunch of them behind because like we like it here. We're just going to live here now, and like that I like that mentality. It just don't know why, but it gels with me. Yeah, like, it's been a long time since I've, I've read this book, so I'm actually pretty keen to reread it, and mm. I'm really keen to, to inflict it upon Swoosh and John Doe. <laughs> um, because, yeah, quite honestly, like, as far as, like, space operas go, like, I could I could get you to read something like um, Hyperion, and it's like, that is some mm. dead shit. Yeah. Like, it's a good book, but fuck me, that thing is a tome. Yeah. Um, but this is good. This is This is... This is fun. Mm. Like, really genuinely fun. Um, I really, really love this series, and I think um, you guys will too. Um, And like I said, it's a complete series. Like, if you decide you like it, there's only seven books. Yeah. Which is always good. Only 20 hours a book. Yeah. So, you know, it's it's very completable. It's not like some of these other book series we've been reviewing, like Stray Cat Strut or... Uh, he who fights with monsters where we're like when's the next one I, I've already pre-ordered the next one it came up on Audible I'm like yeah push the button yeah, yeah I know so did I it's actually um, I gotta say that's one shitty thing with Audible it doesn't come up with you've read this series here's the next book yeah it fucking shits me I've gotta go through each fucking series to find out when the next fucking book comes out yeah. god damn yeah. there's a lot of fucking series there's so, so many you know and so, so this one's done. So if you decide mm. you like it, that's it. You got seven books to read. Peace out. Yeah, nice. Um, I am by the look of this, anyone else who wants to listen to it, it looks to be included in an Audible Plus subscription. So if you've already got your Audible, uh, the Plus catalog, so I just looked nice. it up, and there's two titles for it. There's one that's just uh, Hidden Empire, and the other one listed with a full title, Hidden Empire: The Saga of Seven Sons. And huh. yeah, so you may be able to listen to it without using a credit. Nice, yeah, always a good quick thing. Look and make sure about. Yep, yep. No, that is the correct book. That is, yeah. I, I didn't even know this. Me and I until right. I just looked up the whole series, and I just yeah. found out there's also a, a prequel book. A, yeah, Veiled Alliances. Cool. Yeah, I'm not big on the books he's done around Saga. Mm. Fair enough. Um, actual saga is excellent. A lot of the, the the surrounding books, the prequel and the following book, 
are mostly about like filling in little gaps that were left from the main story. Ah, they're out there just um, sort of shoehorned into a gap, so fill it in. Well, that or like there's some plot ideas that were uh, explored in the main series, and he didn't get a, get to them, so he did a follow up series that explores some of that. It's like it's not necessary, um, and I don't quite like the follow up series Saga of Shadows nearly as much. Yeah, it's not bad, but it's not great. Yeah. Not compared to Saga, like I'm, I will yell from the rooftops that people should go read Saga of Seven Sons. See, Saga of Seven Sons is original recipe Coke, and the other one is like new Coke. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's a good way to put it, actually. But yeah, well, that will be yeah. our next month's book, and I will probably end up doing the entire series because it's going to be fun. Yeah, <laughs> and and we have no self control. Let's be honest. It's yeah, I think that's more the problem we have. Yeah, it's like you know. You, you gotta finish up all the laundry files now and, and this and sooner or later we'll be like yo more of Stray Cat Struts out we read that and, yeah uh, pretty much <laughs> and then we've also got the new uh, He Who Fights With Monsters and it's gonna be good it's never yeah. Go and fucking I mean, damn yeah I can, I can tell you now in uh, wait a minute let me check what the let me check something real quick the, a lot of these books are <laughs> if we want to I was about to, to say in three months' time, it's my pick again, and it'll be a horror novel. And I just realized that'll be October. <laughs> yes, that's right, we worked this out. Cause, that's right, because the way we worked this out originally was because there's three of us, um, you always end up with the October one. Yeah, I just... Yeah. Because it was a pick between a horror novel and this this, this month. So nice. it's like, I was going to do the horror novel next pick, and it's like, ah, oh, I get the October book again. <laughs> Perfect. Which I get the Christmas book again, that's going to be interesting. Yeah. I'll find something dumb. <laughs> right. I think that's it. Uh, 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 um, yes, we are out past now. I just had to check the timer. Um, so I think that's us done. Yeah. Y'all have a good one. Enjoy. See ya.